A recent question about displaying a number of videos in a frame over a background image gave me the idea for video 114. But what if we wanted to use an oval frame? In that case, we would need to use PTE AV Studio masks to ensure that the corners of our video don't appear outside of the frame we're going to use. So let's set this up from the slide list here. I'm going to drag down a sky just to give myself a background for this. And we'll open up that sky into the objects and animation screen. In the bottom right corner, I want to click to remove the selection from that gray sky. Right click and I'm going to add a control frame. Now we can change the name of this frame. Sometimes it's worth doing for convenience. We'll find that in the properties tab above. But here with the frame selected, I'd like to right click again and I'm going to add an image, but the image I'm going to add is the frame. Let's pick up this gray simple frame that I created. If I then go back to my frame, I'm going to right click this time I'm going to add the mask. The mask I want is the mask template. A circle is okay because I can make it an oval in a few moments, but I don't want it to be blurred. So let's just drop the blur away, but we'll click OK to the rest. Now if we select the mask content here, I'm going to right click and add the video. And there's the video I've chosen. Now the first thing you'll notice is the grey frame that I created has been pushed down the layered stack here. So we need to bring it back to the top so it sits above the video. Control and page up will do that. Now let's go to the mask stencil and the mask circle within it. If we select that, and go to the zoom, we can uncheck the link here so we can just change the width and not the height. I'm going to put my cursor into that box because I'm going to use my up arrow, I'll press and hold, and you can see we can quickly take the width right out to just inside that inside edge. I could do the same thing with the top and bottom as well, but obviously not quite as much. But there we have our setup. If we put our cursor back at the start and press play, there we've got our video playing within an oval frame. If you wish to display vertical portraits within the oval frame, then we just need to rotate that frame 90 degrees, and then we can adjust the mask stencil's height rather than the width we did here. Now that's all there is to it, and once we have one parent frame created, we can effectively have as many as we want via copy and paste. And you'd need to see video 114 for that. Now the video length that I've used here, this piece of video is about 12.8 seconds, just under 13. Now one question was that an author would like to have a still image in a frame for around about 10 seconds of a 20 second slide duration and then to have a video such as this playing for the final 10 seconds. But because our video is only 10 seconds in length that can give us a little bit of problem with video offset and we'd have to work in the objects and animation screen with keyframes. But perhaps there's an easier way to do this. So coming back into the slide list, let's set that up. If we've got 20 seconds of slide duration to work with and we want to have a 10 second still and 10 seconds of this video, well, I can drop that down to 10 seconds. I can then copy and paste this with a right click or via Control C, Control V. Now, if I select the first of these two and go back into the objects and animation screen. What I want to do here is to remove the video and I'll just delete. 
select the mask content, right click and add an image. And I've selected this one for demo purposes. So there we have our still image and it's going to be nicely followed by the video. And of course, we could even zoom or animate this within the frame because we've got the edges protected by the mask. So now my 12.8 second video is running within a slide duration of 10. So that works pretty well too.